Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. So today we're going to talk about what I'm going to be using for our next mini album build project. This is the prototype for the new set of templates that I've released. This is the basically amazing enchanted decorative edge add-on. So you need uh, a foundation and you need the decorative edge add-on if you want to uh, make this with me. And I'll have everything linked down below, but what we're going to do in this video is we are going to talk about the paper collection I'm using. We're going to talk about what uh, templates I'm using. We're going to talk about some additional things, some optional things. We're going to talk about uh, ink, uh, what inks we might be using, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'll put timestamps uh, down below in the description box, and I will also pin it in the first comment below the video. But I did a very detailed flip through of the prototype of this album. We're not going to be using this paper collection for this um, album series, but I did a very detailed flip through of this if you want to make it for yourself, this one. Um, I will link that up here in the cards, okay? There's also an introduction video to the new set of templates that I will link up in the cards as well. So this was a really good, this is a really good, um, what's, what am I trying to say? This is a really good example of how pretty the decorative edge is in action. So, so I wanted to tell you uh, straight away that there's gonna be things added along the way it, it's inevitable. It's always going to happen. And I try not to plan out too terribly much because I like to go with the flow a lot. But I do know some things. So that's what I'm going to share with you today in this video. I'll also have a collections list for my Etsy shop for all of the different printables that I'm going to be using during this project. I will have that link down below. I found that that's a really fun and easy way to have everything in one spot so there's not a whole bunch of links for each thing. You can just hit that collections list and it will take you to my Etsy shop and it will be everything that I've used so far. So every time I add something new, I will, I will um, add that in there. So all the printable stuff will be linked in that. I also have uh, a special Amazon list for this project. I uh, put everything that I use while making this album in that Amazon list, so check that out. And then there's other links for other various things down there. So all of it's down there as best as I can uh, do. We're also going to do a little prep, a little project prep for this album in this video. We'll do that at the end, or maybe we'll do, well, maybe we'll do it as we go. I'm not sure. I'd already done a super detailed flip of the paper collection that we're using for this project but i will do a quick one now for you so we are using the well i am going to use you can you can use <laughs> whichever paper collection you want i'm going to be using the plant department by prima and i'm going to be using both the 12 by 12 and the 6 by 6 paper pad there for whatever reason the 12 by 12 paper pad does have foil by the way that's not what i was getting ready to say but um, for whatever reason, when I link it, it says there's only 14 pages or something like that, but there's 26 pages, so I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway, so I'm going to be using the, I'm going to be trying to just use one 12 by 12 paper pad and then one 6 by 6 paper pad. Um, so you get four sheets of each. And they're double-sided, so basically you get two sheets of each design. That's the way I like to look at it. And I've already pulled out uh, two of each, pretty sure. And then there's a bonus sheet. Did I get two bonus sheets? No, two cutout element sheets. Are they the same? Let me double check. Yeah, so you get two of the same uh, of the bonus cutout sheet elements. Or they're not bonus, though the two cutout sheets. Well, it does say bonus sheets included. I don't know. It doesn't say bonus sheets up here. <laughs> but anyway, this is a really pretty paper collection. And as I was prepping for this, I've noticed there's a couple different ways you could use this paper collection. And I'll talk about that a little bit as I'm showing you different stuff. But like, you could seriously have, you could take a couple of these color combinations and make totally different albums from each other. It's, it's really an interesting setup this time. I kind of dig it. Um, a lot of possibilities. 
to have all those different color combinations, all those different options. So really, I'm just going to put this aside. I'm not going to tear these out. Normally for my album prep, I'll even the 6x6 six six paper pad, I'll take two of each. But I'm just going to leave this one as a whole and I'm going to put it in my Crafty Companion. If you don't know what a Crafty Companion is, it's my workstation. I have a whole video playlist on the Crafty Companion. I will link it up here for you if you want to check it out. But it's like one of the most handiest things I've ever created in my life. <laughs> So I'm going to set this paper pad aside because I do have pages already pulled. So what I like to do when I pull my 12 by 12s out of the paper pad, I like to stick them in one of these plastic 12 by 12 paper holder thingies so that um, I can keep them together and safe. So I just want to point that out. I'll have these linked um, in my Amazon as well. Okay, so I'm just going to real quick flip through these. I think I already have them where they're front and back, yeah. So, we'll just go real quick. And then there's that bonus sheet. So Prima did a really good job this time, I think, of giving us a really good page, a really fun, lots of stuff going on, and then giving us the backside as more of a plain accent kind of page, or vice versa, however you want to look at it. They did a really good job this time of not every page looks like this. You know what I mean? Not every page is so busy. Um, so I think they really did a good job with that. I'm not going to put this too far because I'm going to show you some color examples with this in just a minute. I'm going to have to move them out of the way. Okay, so here's what I'm going to be using uh, in addition to, we're, we're going to stop with the paper collection right now because I have other stuff we're going to use, but I wanted to share with you what we're going to be using from my templates. Let me scoot in so you can see maybe a little better. So I tried to print off the Etsy listings photos so that you could see what they look like. So I'm going to be using the Basically Amazing Foundation in the flower background design. I will show you, where's it at? Here's the flower background design and it just goes really nicely. The tone goes really nicely with this paper collection. Here is, hang on, I'm talking to the wall here. Here's the rose background design and it also goes really nicely. But some of the neutrals in here um, just went better with the flower. Let me see if I can find it. So the neutrals here, so this, I mean, it still looks good. Either one looks good. So whatever you want to use, please use what you want to use. So it just looked a little bit better with some of the neutrals that are in here. Um, in my opinion, the tone of it just looked, but again, you need to do your own printer testing. Cause what if your printer prints this a little bit more yellow than my printer and your printer prints this perfectly fine with this paper collection. So just keep that in mind. So if you go with the roses background design, you can you can just every time I use one of the, the one of the one of the pages that's in flower, you just use the roses one. So it's just kind of as simple as that. But I'm gonna be using the flower one today or today in this project. Let me move this back out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to be using the flower background design. We're going to be using it in both the foundations and the new enchanted decorative edge. So I've got that in the flower. Both of those are in the flower. And then some additional things. All, all of these are all optional. Everything from here on forth, optional. It's totally up to you if you want to use them or not. So here I've got the photo mats essentials and the basically amazing photo mats. Use whichever one you want. The Basically Amazing Photo Mats have a lot more sizes, a lot more options, where the Photo Mat Essentials are a little bit more pared down, a little bit um, more simple. So it, whichever one you're going to go with, and, and as far as which background to use you, you, that you want to use for the, if you have the Basically Amazing Photo Mats, use whichever one you want. It does not matter. Um, I don't think it's going to matter. But... Um, anyway, you can use either one of these, but I will be using one or the other, or maybe both. It, either way, it doesn't matter. You pick whichever one you want. 
And then I'll definitely be using the photo mats too. Now again, I'll have all this linked in a collection for you guys so that you can see. I'll put both of these in that collection so you choose whichever one you want. I'm going to put the flower one in there just because that's a newer one. Um, and then, okay, so again, all of this is optional. I am going to be using the Shades of Color 2. And I'm also going to be using the Flip Flop Ephemera Printable. I have color swatches printed out, so I was going to show you those just really quick. So, um, oh, the Flip Flop Ephemera Printable, I created that using, or for this, hang on, I'm grabbing it. I created that when we made, what is back here? When we made the Flip Flop Journal. So I created this whole printable, it's just ephemera and some printable papers. Uh, for this, I will link that uh, album series up here, the Flip Flop Journal. It was a lot of fun, but they're useful for other stuff too, you guys. So we're going to be using that in this album. And one of the backgrounds, one of like, not the backgrounds, one of the full pages that you can print goes perfectly with this paper collection as well. So I've got that printed off here. I actually do not know exactly where I stopped. My son came home, so I had to stop for a minute. Now I forgot what I was doing. I think I was just talking about the optional additions that I'm going to be using. <laughs> so the flip flop ephemera printable. There's a lot of good stuff in here that goes with this paper collection. So not only am I going to use all of those different little bits and pieces, but I'm also going to be using this printable uh, full sheet you know, printable design. What is this called? Uh, pattern paper <laughs> from that. There's several. There's one that looks like this, but the color's just a little off. It may, it depends on your printer. So you may want to do a little test print, but for my printer, this color is a little bright for this paper collection. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be, be using this along with the ephemera that comes with the flip flop. And then, so the shades of color too, I have chosen three colors that go perfectly with this paper collection and I will, I will demonstrate. So let's see, I think I got extra somewhere. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so color number seven on the shades of color two goes perfectly with um, this pretty color here. So I also want to again say you test your you test your printer. You do the test print and you figure out which colors go with your paper collection. So in the monitor this actually looks a little different than it does in person. This is kind of a periwinkle color. This is like this color number seven is like one of the more muted parts of the paper but it does in in real life it looks perfect to me but on camera it looks it looks a lot different but it'll it'll still look good so the number seven is what I'm using to match up with this color here and then number 22 is what I'm using to match up to this color here and it's a perfect match. So again, do your own test because you know there's different shades. That's what the whole thing of shades of color. So there's three shades of this color. There's a lighter, a light version, a medium version, and a darker version. So I'm using shade 22 to match for this color. And then for this color, I'm using four. And I'm going to try to hold it up here because it's the lighter version uh, that's in the paper collection. It's the lighter color. And to me, it matches perfectly to that. So those are the three shades that I have picked out of the, um, out of the shades of color. And I'm not going to pre-print a bunch of them off. I may print one. I may not print a bunch of them off because... It, I might use it might use different thicknesses of paper throughout the album. I, I do that a lot. Okay, so there's that. The shades of color. Um, those are the colors. So it's a number four, number seven, and number twenty-two. And then the uh, pastel green vintage collage and the pastel pink vintage collage. So I always like to supplement my paper collections with something printable, whether it be. Um, 
a, something that's like a collage scripty something that has a little bit of interest that also matches the paper collection. So I was looking at them and these are, I, t I, I printed off, each one of these come with a solid, stepping on something, come with a solid sheet that matches the, there's only five pages per each, per, um, her set here because they're two different sets but they both come with they each come with a solid uh, color so if you didn't want to get if you didn't want to use the shades of color and you just wanted to use these these match pretty good so this pink here matches the pink that's in these and that's in these papers it's like a lighter it's like one of the lighter parts of the pink but it'll be a nice little supplemental color and then this green here the pastel green it matches, let's see, here it is. It matches this color here. So the green uh, and the pastel green. Now, again, this is my printer, so test your printer, okay? Test your printer. So this is what I'm going to be using. Um, and they also, the sets come with, you know, different um, scripts and collage and things. So, it just kind of matches this paper collection pretty good. So, I thought it would be fun to use these. I, these, I haven't used these in quite some time. So, I wanted to bust them out. Actually, a lot of the colors, the blue works, the neutral works, the purple doesn't work, but the others do. So, I, but I just picked these two because of the shades of color that we've got uh, for the other stuff. So, they've got a lot of, of, of visual interest and a lot of choices to you know put uh, behind like photo mats or just to be a contrast from this to this so those are the printable things i'm going to be using from my etsy shop and one more so i'm going to set these aside because i think that's that's it this. I like having, I, I print these off like this. There's two to a, I print two to a page. So it's like, uh, yeah, two to a page. Yeah, basically. And I unclick fit to page. And this way I have uh, something like if I'm trying to figure out what I want to match this paper with, um, my layout, like the different elements of my layout, I can, I have the, my, why am I saying layout so funny? My layout. I'll have, <laughs> I'll have a sample that I can hold up next to it and be like, okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to use. That's kind of how I work. Uh, so I've done that. So if you want to wait on whether or not you get the shades of color too or the pastel green, if you don't already have them, a lot of you already have them, you know, which is great. If you want to wait on any of these, these are all optional to see how much they're used. Um, it's totally fine. You don't have to buy them right now. You don't have to have everything if you don't want to. Okay, and so I also, I also print off one of the pages for the background design so that I can also do the same thing. You know, I was telling you I could see what looks best with the paper that I want to use in that specific layout. Okay, so there's that. Let me put a clip on here. I'm going to move these aside. Now let's talk about some of the um, paper collection embellishments and flowers and things that I'm going to use. Well, there's there's a couple that I'm not 100% sure of yet, but one thing for sure is I'm, I bought these chipboard stickers, and um, I think it's pretty fun. Did I tell you what size album we were going to make? I think we're going to do a big one, an A-size album. I should probably should have started when I was talking about that. I should have started with that. I think we're going to start with the big one, the A size. I don't know how many fins we're going to use yet, but I think we're going to make the big one. It gives it just gives us a lot more options, you know, when we make the big one. So these there's 27 pieces, and these are just fun accents on planar pages. I just and they're a little bit of dimension, so um, we're going to be using those. So I'm going to set this over here in my crafty companion. And then I'm on the fence about this. This is one of the molds where you put, um, you make things, you make, it looks like leaves, I guess. I guess they would technically be, the way the paper's set up, I think they would be falling down. So I haven't, 
100% decided on this one yet, whether or not we're going to be using it. Um, we may or may not be using it on the covers would be probably where one would use it. But So I'm kind of on the fence on this one. So this is kind of optional, I would say. If I do end up using it and you don't have it, maybe I'll provide, not provide, but like give you other ideas <laughs> to, you know, replace it with. But so that's a maybe. I'm going to set it over there in just in case. And then the other things I'm going to use are... I like this set here for the cover because it there's different sizes and it's got these fun this little bouquet are they is it a bouquet or there's stems individual little stems I, I like I like this for the cover and they're way too dimensional for the inside so I think we'll try to use these on the cover and then these other three I think oops sorry about that glare let me scoot in again the other three here are, some of them are really dimensional, but you can take them apart and flatten them out a little bit. So, um, yeah. So this one is number 664404. Wait a minute. This one is number 664350. This one is 664404. And then these flat ones, of course, will go on any page because they're flat and they're little. So these are fun. This is 664411. And then there's these. I don't know. This is the one I'm on the fence about. They're glittery. See, I feel like, so, and they're also really dimensional too, but I feel like we could take apart some of these different pieces, right, and use it, but the glitter, the glitter, I'm just not sure about the glitter, but some of these we can take apart and use the different little pieces as well. There's only two, three, really dimensional ones in there so i'm gonna put this on the fence i'm not sure if i'm gonna use this one or not um we'll see but i have it here i did take a bunch of them out like i have i bought uh, all kinds of of stuff so i try to pair it back when i when i start working on the album so this one's gonna be on the fence as well so i'm not gonna open that one yet um but i do kind of want to open these flowers and put them, I'm, I'm not gonna open this one yet. I don't know, maybe I will. Let's go ahead and do it, why not? All right, so I'm gonna get one of my Crafty Companion trays out and I'm going to put my flowers in here. Just so I can see everything when I go working on the project. See what I mean? Aren't those precious? I just, they, they kind of remind me of Easter eggs or something. I don't know, don't know why, but they do. <laughs> and then there's a couple little additional flat uh, leaf type things. Okay. So I keep all my packaging. Sometimes I put the stuff back in, sometimes I don't. But I'm gonna put my packaging somewhere. Where am I gonna put it? Well, I'm gonna put it to the side right now. <laughs> I need to move a bunch of stuff to get to it. And I'm going to open this one and put those in here. Sometimes I do separate them out. Oh, that's a, I didn't realize that was a circle. That's kind of fun. I didn't even realize that. Okay. Sometimes I separate them out uh, size, like ones that won't work inside the album kind of thing. Um... Or I'll take ones out that I know we're going to use on the cover. So we might end up doing that later. I'm just trying to get this in here. We might end up doing that later. I don't know. A lot of times I don't do the cover right away. So we'll see. Okay. And then, of course, these itty bitty ones. They're just good to have. And they have something in the center. It's like a rose gold kind of like bead or something. So, just a little bit of interest there. All right, let me put these all aside. So, there's one. So, this is easy. You can just pull this, this tray out and look at my options when I'm trying to embellish something. Sometimes I wait to embellish pages and things until later. So, you know, it just really depends. So, I've got that ready. 
And then the last thing from the paper collection are these two ephemera packs. One has 50 pieces and one has 58 pieces. And there's two of each thing. Oh, goodness. Okay. I like that. I like that, Prima. I like that. Okay. I'm pretty excited about this. I, I probably realized that when I first showed you, but that's, I'm pretty excited. Okay. So 661991 and 661984. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open these up and separate them out. Oh look, the inside of their their packaging has uh, on these have print on them. Okay, so I'm gonna probably fast forward here and separate these out into different piles. So uh, I'll fast forward while I'm doing this. You'll still get to see what I'm doing, but um, but anyway. So I like to separate things out from like words and uh, things like that, flowers. And now that we've got two of each, I'm, I need to separate them out. I don't know if I have to separate them out that way, but anyway, so. Those are cute. Look at that. Oh. I just said I was gonna fast forward and look at me. Look at how pretty that is. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly just make smaller piles of each, like things that like the floral type situation. Even with that car there, I think I'm gonna stick that with the florals, floral, floral, and even these cute little peacocks. Floral, that's floral. Um, ah, these are different though. I feel like these are more of like a different type of floral, so I'm gonna leave these kind of things I think together and tickets and things. Let's see. Let's do the ones with um, writing and stuff on them, which they pretty much all do. I don't know what that is. I cannot tell. So that's, I'm gonna put that with the floral. Well, I'm gonna put it over that away. Now I'm gonna open this next pack and do the same thing. Okay, that is a lot of embellishing, embellishments, I mean. <laughs> some of them are really tiny and some of them are really big. Wow, that's a lot. This is a lot, we can do a lot with this. A lot. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna grab a crafty tray. For one thing, I know that things with words, sayings, I'm gonna put in here.
All right, I'm going to grab another crafty tray. Let's, because I know I'll end up moving things around. I know I will. What's that? That's, so I'm just trying to make it what makes sense right now. So let's definitely do all these floral things. Love my floral things. And there's some floral things. Well, I'm going to put the birds and butterflies in here, I think, with the words. They'll stand out a little bit. And the heart shapes. Okay, let me grab another tray. Uh, this, this is... Uh, <laughs> These are things left over from other projects. I just have never taken them out. So I'm going to take them out right now. Put them in a different tray. And then I experiment a lot of times with my wax seals. This is the wax seal color we're going to be using, by the way. Just a heads up. It's my favorite. Um, it's my current favorite. Anyway, it looks really nice with this paper collection. So I have it linked in my Amazon. So you can check it out if you so choose. But I'm just going to push these aside for now because I'm sure I'm going to end up changing some things. I really think I will. So I'm going to put the rest of these in here. So now these are all the, the small, these are the real thin uh, crafty trays out of the options. Uh, I usually put the ephemera that we're going to be using in those. Okay. What wrong? I need to move some stuff so bad. Oh! There we go. Okay, so we got that. Paper collection, put the ephemera up, and then the one of the last things I've done is I have matched up my distress inks like i'm trying to figure out what distress inks i'm going to be using obviously i'm going to be using the walnut stain distress oxide uh, in this project that is my my fave let's scooch back in a little bit but i was testing out other colors well this we're not using this color here from the shades but i have all of the distress oxide colors so I put them on cardstock. So this is the cardstock that I use on the on the regular all the time. And then this is like a mixed media type paper. So I printed uh, the distress uh, oxide thing from the website uh, off onto each one of these. And then when their new ones are coming out, I kind of try to put them around white colors, but it doesn't always work that well. So the latest one I got was the Lost Shadow, which is a really, 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 really soft gray color. Um, but it's kind of neat. So uh, I can see where it could be a pretty useful color, but we're not going to be using that in this one. <laughs> but uh, here's the Walnut Stain right here. If you can see, that's the one we're going to be using. So I, I, I like to stamp it. I use my stamp set. I like to stamp it, the little heart from my stamp set. This little guy right here. Oh, you can't see it on the block. This one, the little heart right there from my stamp set. My stamp set's linked down below. Um, I use my little heart and I stamp it and then I use a water brush and kind of mush it out to, because I want to see what it's going to look like um, when it gets wet. So, and oxides look different when they're wet. So, anyway. So, I went through and I held my papers up to this I'm using the cardstock one and I held my papers up to here and I chose I think for this one shade number 22 again you have to do your own testing I uh, tried these two colors which let's see I have saltwater taffy and I have Victorian velvet I tried those two colors and I th and let me show you 
so Victorian velvet and saltwater taffy. They look completely different <laughs> on the on the tops of the lids here. But this is how I test things out. So these I use hole reinforcements because we're going to be using hole reinforcements uh, on tags and things. And I try to figure out what color I want to use. So these are all optional. You don't need any of these if you don't want them. Just FYI. And if you don't have them, you don't have to go buy them or anything. But I was trying to figure out which one I like best with this this shade here and I think I like the Victorian velvet these uh, saltwater taffy it's okay it's not exactly what I want so what I did was I swiped the ink pad directly onto the the paper hole reinforcement and I sprayed it and got that color then I took a, a blender like I'll show you I have a, a, a lovely subscriber gave me this wanderlust um i don't think there was a candle in it was there a candle in it i can't i'm gonna try to look i don't, I don't think so um gave me this back in the day when the wanderlust came out so i have it sitting next to me it's like all the color groups that i use pretty much so i took one of these and i did it i went over a white um a white hole reinforcement and to see what color it looks like then here I'll scoot you in that'd probably be easier so it looks it's the perfect match for this paper here so I think I'm gonna go with Victorian velvet so I'm gonna keep these little swatches on the back here just so I'll know for future but I'm gonna go with the Victorian velvet for this one I, and again I may not use them but since I have them I'm just giving you guys options so um, you know you can you can choose pick and choose what you want what you want to use so for the the shades of color two, number 22 I'm going to use Victorian velvet if I want to match that up so there's that one and then I did the same for all the colors so the shade number seven I did uh, stormy sky I did the same thing I swatched the pad directly on and I did the blending and then the the, uh, the third I guess I could have told you the third one <laughs> the third one has some um, walnut stain mixed in as well so stormy sky is perfect for uh, shade number seven in the shades of color to stormy sky right it looks it looks like a perfect match for that one and then for the shade number four, the speckled ed, uh, edge, the speckled egg, when you swipe it directly from the pad to there, it matches this perfectly. So that's an option as well. So we've got those, th aren't they pretty together? Boop, boop, boop. I know you can't really see a lot of it, but it's just pretty. So if you're using the shades of, shades of color, those are the three that, um, We'll match those and then uh, the pastel pink and pastel greens let's see the the pastel green the closest I could get to what my printer prints um, would be the evergreen bow and it's a little darker but it's the same like color family again what my printer prints so um, I think I'm gonna use well I'm gonna have it out so I might and it, it looks like it's a lot brighter on screen on on the monitor here but if you just go gently with the why can't I think of that what is this thing called you guys um blender with the with the blender and the blending foam if I go gentle I think it, it goes really well with that And then for the pastel pink, I had two options. And let's see, uh, sponge sugar and kitsch flamingo. So what's interesting about this is the sponge sugar looks really nice with this printed paper, but the kitsch flamingo looks really nice with the bright pink from this paper so I guess either one will work so I don't know I couldn't I couldn't make a decision on that so I just left them both 
there. And so that would be these two. So yeah, those are the those are the inks that go with this paper collection. So if you've got any of these and you want to add some, like we might be doing some seam binding, we might be dyeing some seam binding, we might be um, dyeing some lace or some fabric or something like that with these. Uh, hole reinforcements for sure, for sure. I uh, have all that linked in my Amazon, the hole reinforcement. We're going to be using magnets and magnet savers. So I have those linked down below. Uh, probably that same set with these with this flower it goes perfectly with this paper collection for the wax seal stamps we'll, we'll be using that so that'll be in the list and i don't know there might be other stuff so i know for sure um some things and some things are still optional so all of these are optional obviously and so are all of the printable papers if you uh, have no desire <laughs> to have all these different color options then you don't you know you don't need to uh, have them or print them or buy them but these are all optional and it just gives us a lot of choices it just looks really really nice with this this whole color combination just looks really nice like let me show you i'm gonna back up so remember I, earlier i said let me put this up i said that um, you could literally, that's six different inks. You could literally take this paper and sp split it up, you know, into different color combinations and have totally different looking albums. Let me show you. Let me show you what I mean by that. So, for example, like I think that this paper here, let me move this one and this paper here i think these are beautiful together this color combination so it's like the blue and the green it's like a, a periwinkle blue and a really pretty beautiful green color i think this could be an album on its own just these two color combinations and then i think that the um yeah i'm thinking i'm in the right I think that this pink, this peachy pink and this green, these softer pastel colors would be a really pretty color combination. So there's two different color combinations for two different albums. And then there are uh, four neutrals. So, I mean, there's, it's, it's, you know, front and back, right? So there's four neutrals that can go either way but if i was to pick pick i would probably put oh i don't know both of them would go with either one so you could literally make two different albums with this set and and this set does that make sense so if you let's say you went with this set you could use the the pastel the um pink and green pastel and you could also use the flip-flop, you know, the the, um, the printable paper from the flip-flop. And it goes really nicely with the background. Let's see what it looks like with the roses. It could, the roses could go really nicely with it too. So if you wanted to do the roses over here, you could do that, right? And then for this collection, this paper, this, this uh, color collection, you could go with, you could also use this, obviously matches that perfectly from the shades. You could go with the, with the shades of color and the, in the blue and the green. Over here, along, also, you can use this. Then you can also add one of the background designs, whether it's the, the flower or the roses, either one, I think. I still, for this color combo, this one would probably go the best. This one would go over here. This one would work over here, but Either way, I think you can interchange, you can make literally two different albums with this paper pad. So I'm really kind of digging that. So we could, we could even too make, now let's think about this a minute. We could even make a, like a smaller album to go with the bigger album. Let's think, let's see. We could do a, each fin a color combination and rotate it back and forth. 
I'm gonna give it some thought. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you the versatility of this particular paper collection, and and you may not have thought about breaking it up into two separate, you know, two totally different albums because I feel like it would look and feel differently. Like let's say you put this on the cover over here, so this would be that uh, album, and then over here you put this one on the cover. They would be totally different albums. They would co they would go together but they would be a totally different album. So it's something to think about when you look at paper collections. Um, oh, one other thing. So this cut apart, I forgot about this. This cut apart here, this cut apart page, um, I might fussy cut these out off camera and add them to the embellishments. And I might not. I don't know. I haven't decided. <laughs> we'll see. I might leave it whole for now and, and do this later. I don't know. I can't, I just can't decide at the moment. So, so anyway, all right. I think, I think you guys, I think that's all I have. I think that's all I've got going here. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and get your workbook made with the basically amazing enchanted, if you want to go ahead and get this made, um, I did make a video on the uh, workbooks for the add-on. I will link it up here in case you want to check that out because it, these workbooks are so helpful and because they can easily grab things, trace things, you can print things, you can look and say, okay, this will go with this. And these are just, these are almost invaluable. Okay. So take a time, take a minute to make these workbooks. You don't have to make them like this. You could do a binder with sheet protectors. You could do everything in a folder. You could put everything in a zip. I, it doesn't matter how you do it. Just try to give yourself a little bit of organization. So we can make, you know, 10 albums in a row and you would never get confused because you have all of this stuff ready to go. Um, and you're like, okay, well, I want to use this decorative edge. Well, boom, you grab this and you're good to go. Does that make sense? So do take a minute to make some sort of workbook. Okay. All right. I think that might be it. I'm sure I'm going to add a ton of stuff later. I always do. I didn't really delve into a bunch of other things like the, um, like, like metal bits and stuff like that. I didn't really dive into that part of it yet. I think I'm just going to add things as we go. And um, that way you don't unnecessarily buy something and we don't end up using it. Uh, I try to use the same things over and over and over again, just because it's good to get a, a bunch of versatility out of, or a bunch of versatility, a bunch of use out of the products that we purchase, right? I don't want you to throw your money away. So, okay, I think that, I think, I think that's that's all I got for you guys today. I think that was a lot. All right, you guys, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you're going to be uh, playing along with us uh, during this album. And uh, let me know your thoughts, obviously. And make sure you subscribe to my channel and all that. Hit the bell, all that. And thanks so much for hanging out with me today. And I will see you guys in the next one.